this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. I've got a few topics to discuss with you in this latest Moon Lambo hot jam. And so recently, uh, for some reason, an interview with David Schwartz from months ago started circulating throughout social media in the XRP community yet again. And sometimes this stuff just happens. It is what it is, and that's fine. Uh, but it's catching attention because David Schwartz said something that is uh, like sacrilege, effectively. <laughs> he said effectively... Uh, you know, banks, you know, just not really interested in moving money around. So they're, that means, of course, they're sure as hell not interested in using XRP. Uh, but frankly, I appreciate the intellectual honesty. And it's not so bad as it might sound on the surface, which is why I want to talk about this. And it's not surprising to me at all. But let me talk about the specifics as we start getting into this video. Um, then there's also this headline. Uh, this one's like crypto pundit believes XRP could eclipse Bitcoin soon for these reasons. And so this is a new article, but it's it's covering something, uh, it, it, a, a debate actually that took place. And I, I did talk about some of this uh, at the time, but it took, a debate that took place a few weeks ago. And it just highlights a point that I want to make. So not to like belabor the point, but even if I just want to say this at the outset, even if it were true that banks would just never use XRP and maybe Ripple's on-demand liquidity product, if that actually failed, which it's not, but even if it did, that would not mean the end of XRP because it does other stuff. The market has already decided that it it makes sense for it to be, and it has been for its whole life, in the top 10 coins by market cap. That's not specifically because of Ripple and on-demand liquidity. And to prove the point, Anytime Ripple has good news about anything it's doing with XRP, the market does not respond. <laughs> so it doesn't matter anyway. They're, it's like the market says, yes, XRP makes sense, but, and this is, it should be viewed as a positive, I think, but it, it be, it's not because of Ripple. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, then we also have this from Cointelegraph. Ripple co-founder, Harris will have completely different approach to crypto. Ugh. They're talking about Chris Larson. I'm sure by now most of you have heard he's donated millions and millions in, uh, uh, worth of XRP uh, to support uh, the Harris campaign. And my God, like, look, I'm a fan of Chris Larson on the whole. He is missing the mark here. <laughs> I don't understand how he's got, uh, he's got the confidence that a Harris administration would be good for crypto. Forget the rest of the stuff. All the other, and I understand he's on the left politically. That's fine. That's fine. I'm not going to get into that. I'm not going to preach politics. That's uh, not what this channel's for. But I will talk about it insofar as it pertains to finance, crypto, the economy, so on and so forth. And on that point, whoa. Um, and so there was this post, and it was shared by a bunch of people, but here's uh, XRP community member uh, no Noti? Noati? No Noti? And he shared this video clip of, of David Schwartz. And um, it's from this video, which was shared by uh, Bank XRP. And this is from uh, several months ago. Um, if you want to go watch it yourself, you can just punch in the title. It's on your screen right here. You can find it pretty easily. Um, but um, he said, and this is a quote from David Schwartz, one of the creators of XRP and the XRP ledger. He said, banks will never be Ripple's success story. And that's true. He literally did say that. But he also said, like, either right, but I think it was right before that. It was either before or right after that. He acknowledged that Ripple does get, uh, from time to time, bank customers. And so, fine, he didn't specifically cite XRP, but obviously, if, if he's like, yeah, you know, banks, they don't want to move money with us. Well, if they're not doing even the messaging portion of it with RippleNet, they sure as hell aren't using XRP. So they just want to do it. And he cited that sometimes they actually really just want a press release because it sounds good. But he pointed out something which I think could not be more obvious. And I knew this in 2017, and I talked about it even from the earliest of days when I, when I launched this YouTube channel, which was uh, middle of December of, of 2018. I, I noted, uh, look, banks are very conservative. Don't expect them to just all jump on board instantly. And so, yeah, it's true. Maybe when it comes to, uh, to technology adoption, nobody wants to be the first because that's risky, but also nobody wants to be the last. Okay, fine. There, there is truth to that. But when it comes to banks, they're super conservative just by nature. And then he also said, you know, another reason outside of the, just the, the, the conservative nature of banks, it's if they start doing it. And I was actually this one actually did surprise me a little bit. But he's he's like, you know, it'll just it'll if, if we start doing this and moving money with Ripple, 
it, it just highlights our inefficiencies. And I'm like, does it though? Because if you've used technology then to fix that, then you're no longer inefficient. Like, what are you, what are you talking? So I was surprised to hear him say that one. To me, that one, uh, I will re respectfully state that one doesn't make sense to me, but that is one of the things that David Schwartz pointed out there. But the conservative nature of banks, yeah, that's not surprising at all. But that's also why I noted at the outset, it doesn't matter. In the end, it simply does not matter, even if on-demand liquidity failed, but it hasn't. And as David Schwartz highlighted, they, they are finding some success with banks. But look, e either this, either on-demand liquidity and Ripple, Ripple payments make sense, or it doesn't. And if it does, then I still say, let enough time pass, and it's going to work. And in fact, that is the direction where it's going. Now, uh, maybe it's not uh, the runaway success that Ripple thought it would be because they uh, didn't recognize the degree to which it would be difficult getting some of these financial institutions, specifically banks, to jump on board using cryptocurrency. Uh, fine, but uh, that that's why they're branching out into other stuff, and that's fine. But even those things are good for XRP too. It's like, and I've been saying this since I launched this channel, I still believe it's true. You know, at the core of pretty much everything that Ripple's doing, it's XRP because they have the most XRP out of any holder on the planet. So they have the most to lose if it doesn't go well. So it's ever present in their minds. Of course it is. That's why they're launching a stable coin, which requires the usage of XRP on the XRP ledger anyway. It's launching on Ethereum, in which case that's not true, but for the XRP ledger, yeah, absolutely. For And, and for every single transaction. Like, do you not think that would be incredibly beneficial for XRP because I'll tell you we know that total value locked is a crucial metric and those chains that have the highest total value locked those are the cryptocurrencies that run to new all-time highs are more likely to anyway this is incredibly positive for XRP itself so I don't think any of this matters it is true I'm glad that uh, David Schwartz is speaking frankly he always speaks frankly I always appreciate that about him he's just a straight shooter and it, it just, it's not something that is uh, some sort of huge negative for XRP that this is indeed the case. And it, and like I said, like the market, it's decided XRP made sense, but I don't think that's so much because of what Ripple's doing. I really don't. In fact, to drive this point home, the, the, this is a new article here, but again, it's covered in an interview from a few weeks ago, which I did briefly speak about, at least in one video. Uh, but the headline here, Pundit believes XRP could eclipse Bitcoin soon for these reasons. And so you see part of what's covered in this article is it, it's, it's an acknowledgement from one of uh, the, one XRP proponent anyway, that XRP can do what Bitcoin can't from a technological perspective. And I've made this point many times. Yes, okay, so Satoshi Nakamoto launched Bitcoin as a peer-to-peer -peer cash system, but it's not really good at being a peer-to-peer -peer cash system. Is It's pretty costly, it's very slow, so on and so forth, but XRP can do that. And I think just the fact that XRP works, that's one of the most obvious things that has resulted in XRP having staying power to the degree that it has. Because it's rare. It is rare to have a coin like XRP go through what it's been through, and then it's it's still in the top 10. There are only three coins in existence out of over tens of thousands of coins. There are over 20,000 coins last I checked. There's only three that have always been in the top 10 coins by market cap for their entire existence, and that's Bitcoin, it's ETH, and it's XRP. That's it. Doesn't that tell you something? The market has already decided XRP makes sense. And I just don't think that Ripple has a ton to, to do with that, as evidenced by the fact that anytime Ripple does anything with XRP, the market doesn't care. The, the market cares more about what the SEC does as it pertains to XRP. Think about that. That's wild. So anyway, piece reads as follows. Former Ripple executive and crypto enthusiast Matt Hamilton has suggested that XRP may soon outpace Bitcoin as the leading cryptocurrency. Speaking during a recent episode of the Mr. M podcast on YouTube, Hamilton engaged in a spirited debate with longtime Bitcoin advocate Da Vinci Jeremy regarding the future of these two prominent digital currencies. As a staunch supporter of XRP, Hamilton highlighted several key advantages that he believes position XRP for greater success compared to Bitcoin. And I'll just pause to note, if you guys want to check this out for yourself, uh, this is the, the video itself. Uh, I watched this whole thing when it was brand new. Mr. M Podcast, XRP versus Bitcoin is the name of the video. That's Matt Hamilton on the right. Um, he, he used to work at Ripple, actually, but he was in the XRP community well before he even started working uh, at Ripple. And in fact, when he, jumped in, uh, when he jumped into the XRP community, he was actually working at IBM at the time. 
Uh, and so then that's uh, Da Vinci Jeremy on the left. Now that guy, uh, holy Dunning Kruger effect. This guy, I gotta tell you, hey, <laughs> the undeserved confidence from some of these statements. Just, I just, I, I rolled my eyes more than once listening to this thing. Maybe he's a nice enough guy, but he's also been spreading so many lies about XRP for so long. I, I just, I don't have a lot of trust in him. I'll just say that. I'll just, I think I'll just leave it there. Because uh, he, he is one of the people that's been lying about XRP. It's, it, he lied and said it could be frozen, this and that. Uh, he was confronted about that in this, and then he seemed to kind of back off here because he's debating Matt Hamilton, who actually knows how the XRP ledger works. And so uh, not a lot you can do when you're that type of arena. But he's lied about all sorts of stuff like that. Um, but anyway, so here, here's the quote. XRP was developed to solve some of the issues faced by Bitcoin, particularly regarding scalability and, en and energy use, he stated. He pointed out that the XRP ledger allows for faster transaction times and a higher volume of transactions per second, making it more practical for everyday use. And here's another quote. While Bitcoin can handle only a limited number of transactions at a time, XRP's infrastructure is designed for high throughput, making it ideal for financial institutions and payment providers, end quote. So that's the reason I thought I'd just at least briefly highlight this in my video uh, today, because again, it's just kind of drive the point home. The market's already decided XRP makes sense. Don't you think that this is probably a primary factor? The fact that XRP, it just works. And it's, it's been tried, it's tried and true. It's been around for over a decade. Don't you think that probably matters to people in the space? Cause I sure as hell do. I absolutely think that's the case. And then we have this from Cointelegraph ripple co-founder Harris will have completely different approach to crypto. Okay. I like, I said it at the outset, I like Chris Larson. I think he is disastrously, disastrously wrong on this assumption. We, we should trust Harris about crypto. Why? For who reason? Why? This does not compute to me. And if, if he wants to support her for any uh, left-leaning political reason, fine, he should go for it. I'm not here to talk about that. If he wants to do that, super duper. But if he's going to say publicly that he's doing this because she's going to be great for crypto. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I got to push back on that. There is literally no evidence. In fact, there's evidence to the contrary. Look at what's been happening uh, and to the degree to which she's been complicit in the current administration, how disastrous it's been for crypto. And you think she's going to change? You know, she, she, she was in conversations with the people running the Bitcoin conference in the summer. Remember that? And, and, and there's, and, and she might, there's, a time and thought maybe she's actually going to come and speak and then she didn't but trump did she's like she couldn't she just couldn't go down that path there's been like two sentences where she's paying lip services service to to crypto and that's it uh sorry but uh not sorry i don't believe you i do not believe that you are going to do anything good for crypto because there's no evidence and i haven't seen some sort of course correction other than like a couple sentences and I know that that party platform effectively is anti-crypto. Almost everyone in that political party, by voting record, is anti-crypto. And we're supposed to believe, oh, it's, but it's going to be fine, even though there's no evidence. Oh, okay. Uh, no. Respectfully disagree, Chris Lars. I still like you, but you do not make stance here. You do not make stance. Anyway, peace reads as follows. Chris Larson, one of the co-founders and the chair of payments firm Ripple, who has donated millions of dollars to support Kamala Harris for president of the United States, explained that his endorsement for the Democratic candidate came down to crypto policy. In an October 28th interview with CNBC, Larson said he believed that regardless of whether Vice President Harris or Republican Donald Trump wins in 2024, the war on crypto is over. <laughs> Does he really believe this? I mean, I'd like to give him the benefit of the doubt and assume that he's not lying about that, but... It just seems so naive. Oh, it's it's just over. Oh, it's just over. Have you been following what the SEC is doing down to this very second? What? You have to be kidding me. Anyway, the Ripple co-founder added he was supporting Harris because he was, quote, really excited by her economic message, end quote, of encouraging U.S.-based innovation, citing her roots in the tech hubs of the Bay Area. Okay, I'm going to hold back on even commenting on that. I just got to focus on the crypto stuff for this video. I just, I just don't, I, I, I don't believe that. I'll say that, but that's as far as I'm going here. Uh, no. 
Anyway, another quote here. I'm just really, really confident that this is going to be a completely different approach than, I'll just say it, the failed policy that the Biden administration brought when it came to crypto and digital assets. Because frankly, I think they just weren't paying attention and they sort of outsourced it to Senator Warren and it was a disaster. But that is not going to be how the Harris campaign approaches this. I'm extremely confident in that, end quote. Chris Larson, confident for why? For why are you confident? Where is this confidence coming from? Based on what? Think about think about what he just said here. The he says the the current administration, the Biden administration, they failed here. Who's the vice president? <laughs> Who's part of that administration? Kamala. Yes, exactly. She's a part of this. So she's part of the team that's failing on it, but she's just going to stop failing when she gets promoted. Really? <laughs> come on, man. Like, how am I to take this seriously? Where's this confidence come from, Chris Larson? I do, where, seriously, I want to know. Where's the confidence come from? What did she say to you? I, I, do, I do not understand that. Which is why I, I've been wondering if it really is more so the case that it's just the rest of his politics that caused him to do this and he doesn't care as much about the crypto side of things. I don't know if that's true, but I can't help but wonder it because this don't make sense. It really doesn't. And you know, and if, even if that's the case, that's fine. If your conviction on whatever those things are politically are so strong that you'll say, I'm voting for it for those reasons and crypto be damned, in a way I could respect that. Now, I don't like that because I want crypto to do well, but I could get that at least because I'm not a one-issue voter. You know, it would be hard for me to vote, you know, for a candidate, like say the other side were were pro crypto it would be very difficult for me to vote on that one issue if i thought everything else they were doing was wrong i admit that but i'm not a one issue voter so if, if that's what he's doing i could at least comprehend that from an intellectual perspective but when he says oh I'm, I'm extremely confident that the person who has been complicit in the destruction of crypto is just suddenly not going to be that anymore what no <laughs> not buying that how do you chris larson is a very intelligent guy do you, do you think he actually believes that? Because I, I, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. I, I've never it had a hint of him being a liar. Does he really believe? Is he just naive? I do not get this confidence. They're trying to destroy crypto to this very day. Oh, but it just snap of a finger changes because reasons and I'm confident. No, <laughs> that's not how this works, folks. That is not how this works. <laughs> Oh, man, I hope he doesn't get what he wants. I really hope that he does not get what he wants here. Because that won't be good for anybody that cares about crypto. That's the truth. <sighs> I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau.